All right, shalom and welcome. Today we are going to go over Do Not Wake the Lion. Pretty good subject, I think, that we need to understand that everybody wants the lamb, of course, but we have to be careful to awake or provoke the master. Mark 1 and 41, And Yeshua moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And this is what we're not very careful of, that we want the lamb. We want the cleanliness. We want all the blessings. We want everything that comes along with it, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But we overlook the lion. And we have to understand that there is the one who roars like a roaring lion that's going to and fro and he's looking for us to make a mistake he's looking for us to do something wrong he's looking for us just to be unclean and then when we petition our case into the most high he's sitting there saying they're unclean they're unworthy they're all this so yes we have yeshua we have the lamb but in order to access this he even says what if you love me keep my commandments isaiah 66 and 20 and they shall bring all your brethren for an offering for an offering into yahweh out of all the nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beast to my holy set apart mountain jerusalem Say the Yahweh, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of Yahweh. So we must be a clean vessel. Now, over and over, we think we are clean. We think we have it all figured out. We think we have a lot going on. But if we're not careful, through the scriptures is where we learn these things. And through the scriptures is where we grow. Because if we don't grow through the scriptures, then we're really not learning anything. Ecclesiastics 12, 13 through 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. This is our lifelong duty. This is what we are supposed to be doing. For this is the whole duty of man. For Elohim shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, if we're really honest with ourselves, we are should be very fearful because now the lion is judging us. And he's judging us not by Brother Fred and not by Sister Sally and not by our buddies or by our own conscience. He is judging us by his word. So it's best for us to know his word right and we can go and say all kinds of heresies or blame ourselves or blame others or do whatever but once we awake the lion we're in trouble job 25 and 4 how then can man be justified with elohim or how can he be clean that is born of a woman without the messiah there is no way we have no hope but through him and his word we can be purified right a lot of people say well this body you're absolutely right this body is sinful that's why we get a new body that's why all this life is going to be purified but when we go through that fire when we awaken the king of kings when we awaken that lion that's going to roar and going to use his judgment we really don't want that to happen so how can we keep that how can we say i just want him to awaken and judge me i don't want a awaken wrath i don't want that to happen so we have to go and understand what then provokes him what makes him upset what makes that lion upset right what's going to get the lion to attack us first corinthians 10 22 do we provoke yahweh to jealousy are we stronger than he any other god any other thing it don't matter if it's a statue and why does he say not to have graven images because what do we do what does man do 
And we can all say, I wouldn't worship that. I wouldn't do that. But if it's an angel, if it's something else, if he says not to have it, in a way, in a sense, you're worshiping it because you're going against what he says, correct? You're going and saying, well, I wouldn't do that. And he's saying, don't have that. Now, a lot of times <clears throat> we find Church Andy tells us all we got to do is cross the road. We get out of heaven and we go across the road. We say a prayer and all said and done. And that's the way it works. That's the way it is. That, that's what many think. But if we're not careful, we are provoking him in even doing this. Because he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Ephesians 6 and 4. And your fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admiration of of the Creator of Yahweh right so what are we doing if we're not careful we are making children just like what we become are worse than what we are right so when we tell them hey all you gotta do is say a prayer and go to the altar and do all this man-made things and you will come to a place then we tell them the lies and we tell them these days and we let them accept the world and everything as it is and why do we wonder that we have such a world that nobody respects each other, nobody cares for each other, nobody cares for the truth, nobody wants to hear the truth, and furthermore, when they hear the truth, they're so far removed from it, they don't like it. Right? Well, this is what it really says. We should be actually loving for someone to come and tell us, you know what, that is not really honey. That is actually debash. This is actually what it means. It's actually date honey. Instead of us being loving and kind like he tells us to do, what happens? We get upset. We get mad. Why? Because our emotions, our feelings have just been touched. Something different than the path. But if we're all on a different path, where are we going to? Because it talks of what? The broad path. Matthew 7 and 13 leads to where? Destruction. Many enter through it. We have plenty of ways to choose. Every day we have a, a day to wake up and choose what path we're going to follow. But the other path in Matthew 7 14 leads to life. Right? Few enter through it. That's another problem we as believers we can't comprehend why everybody don't want this truth. But it's for the elect. It's for those who are believing in him. It's for those that he has chosen. Many are called, few are chosen. So the ones that don't listen, the ones that don't want to hear, when we go to the store and they're like, there's that weird guy, there's that weird woman, they done lost their mind, they must have fell and hit a rock on their head again, we understand, we should comprehend they're not on the path, and many don't want to be, right? So we have to be very careful because it's easy to choose the sinful nature, the sinful way. The sin is always the simple, easy way out, right? The difficult way to choose is what we usually find ourselves. Oh, everybody's going to look at me funny. Everybody's going to say I'm this. Everybody's going to talk bad about me. Everybody's going to do all these things. But if we're not careful, what are we proving? What are we provoking? Are we making him jealous? Are we making him, are we putting something in between us and the Creator? Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. It tells us many. It's, it's plain in most cases. Many people are on a different path. And they're going in all different directions, but we know where both these roads lead. The point is, is it the narrow path or is it the broad path? But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life. And only few find it. So it's no wonder that many are provoking him and many are, they don't know his word because they're not on the path. That's Matthew seven thirteen and 14. If you're not on the path, how can you hear his voice? If you're not on the path, if he calls you and you don't listen, what happens? If he calls you out by name 
and you disregard him, what happens? How many times does he have to beat the door down? How many times does he have to knock? How many times has he been there? And then once we open the door, we got to keep that door open. Because as many teach the salvation is always and forever type thing. But as soon as we shut that door and run the other direction, what are we doing? We're again provoking him. We are going against what he says to do. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous altogether. Psalms 19 and 9. Many people don't know the right judgments we have judges and courts is it a perfect court system if is everybody in jail guilty is everybody who ever went to jail guilty is everybody ever paid a speeding ticket guilty not everyone is guilty of what they was charged with was there two or three witnesses does no there was a cop there who says this happened right even if those two or three cops say the same thing did that really happen you see how wicked this can get real quick, and men do it. We know this. If we've ever been seen much of anything, we know how men start provoking, and that's not a just balance. It's not just weights. It's not the way he says to be. The wide road leads to destruction. It is lined with graves of those who are busy digging post holes in quicksand and did not have time for the most high. If we're not careful, we will be stuck in our own ways. And we will let our own ways compile and keep us in a maze. And we will not do the will of the Most High. We're too busy jumping off and fixing everything else. And it might sound great. And a lot of churches and churchanity will tell you this. You go witness and you jump off on this rabbit trail and you jump off on this and you run off over and you're knocking doors and before you know it, you knocked on the wrong door and they're telling you to be Catholic and you came from Baptist. Now you're confused. Now you're going to Catholic church. Now you're in a different church. Now you're in all this confusion, but somebody forgot to read their Bible. Somebody forgot to listen to what so say the Yahweh. Somebody forgot and it's an easy thing to do. If you ever start just down the road, what happens? You'll run into people. People will talk to you. People will invite you. You'll have all kinds of so-called friends inviting you to the broad path. Don't leave the broad path. Please don't leave the broad path. Please don't get away. You're Right? And the more you get into it, the more narrow you find the path really is. His truth is real, and we really find that. So we have to be careful when we see what's going on. And we have to be careful not to provoke him even when we get thrown in the lion's den. Even when we get where we think we're by ourselves. Even when we think we can't trust and rely on nothing. What do we say? That's how we find out who we are. And we find out will we provoke him. Are we going to be the Job? Are we going to be... One to stand there and tell him how everything was wrong in our life. And that's why we did what we did. And that's why we we have to just come to the terms to believe in him at all costs. Elohim sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. So that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Daniel 6 and 22. We have to hear out the whole matter. We have to stand there for the whole judgment. If we're not careful, what do we do? We want to throw judgment before we know what's going on. We want to go and provoke him before we can get things accomplished. Give thanks to Yahweh and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. 1 Chronicles 16 and 8. How are we proclaiming to the world what he's done for us when we're the same person we was last year, 10 years ago? They will see it. We don't have to really grab a drum and beat on it and tell them and, and turn 
you know, glorious white and, and all these fancy things, they will see it. They will understand, even in our voice, even we're trying to be more loving and kind, right? We're trying to do, once we learn, we are trying to do the right thing. In the beginning, most are zealous. We're hollering, we're screaming, and there's a time for everything. But in most cases, come out of her, my people. We're blowing the shofar. We're letting know what, so saith the word. But if they won't come out, it does us no good to stand there and scream our lungs out. They're either going to come out or they're not. We're either going to have them follow or they're not. The Messiah said what? Come and follow me. The more we learn, the more we realize going to the whole earth, going to them and call them, disciple them. Right? We in churchianity have been taught we go to this building and we sit in this building and everybody comes to the building and everything somehow fixes itself through this guy who really don't preach a lot of truth and really don't have a lot and it's more of a dance and you know a good time than it is the word are we provoking him and even doing these things we have to be careful in how we even proclaim his name how we proclaim what he says when it's really easy you know the easier said than done it's easy he says what Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. We can't make a disciple if you won't listen. We're not commanded to grab nobody, handcuff them, throw them on the ground, drag them to town. But we are commanded to go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Baptizing them in the name. Right? So what do we find in a lot of times? People don't have to do anything, they think. They don't have to be baptized in the Father, the Son, and the Ruach. So what do we do? We do what it says. We go and we disciple them. But if we're not careful, we think that is follow this verse, follow that verse, join the Baptist church, sign the card, here's your denomination, and, and what is a denomination? Spell that out. What does that even sound like? demonized right you're demonizing just like the word says you have made them more demonized more ready for the hellfire than what they was before you come across them and if you look at a lot of churches over 20 years most people that started was worse off they don't believe nothing because they was never grounded in the truth now we have yeshua again the lamb and that is the one we mainly want to be dealing with in life. That is the one we want in the end to be participating and saying they're worthy. Because if we're not, all we're going to get is depart from me. I never knew you. And this is why you did wrong. This is where you did wrong. And this is where, especially if we never repent. The scripture says what? To die daily. The sacrifices. What does that mean? Genesis 22 and 7, Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, I my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? We, in a sense, are that offering. We are to go and give him. Again, that's why we don't have strange incense. We don't have, pro we don't have anything upon those logs or to make any other fire other than the Ruach. Because when we do, we present ourselves a living sacrifice, and he will not accept anything unclean. So smoking and all these other incenses, he doesn't have to recognize, and he won't recognize, as we see. So we get up, we praise him, we talk to him, we give him his due honor, and within doing that, we learn, and as we learn, we pass it on. When we learn his voice, when we know his voice, what do we do? We become clean through him, and we become more like him. So essentially what we are, he made us in his image, right? 
essentially his will will be done our father who art in heaven your will be done his will is going to be done it's just the point of those who are obedient and those who listen to him are going to be within his will the ones who are not are going to be cast aside it's like anything else if you have a bunch of bad fruit you're not going to try to eat the bad fruit right you're going to take the good fruit you're going to eat it the bad stuff you're going to cast out you don't want the bad fruit and we think it absurd if the fruit started talking to us and telling us what it's going to do i'm an apple no i'm an orange oh no i don't know we would think we was on some bad drugs right if our fruit started telling us what it was going to do so who are we to go and say oh no we're going to go do whatever we want to do okay go on bad apple <laughs> go ahead bad apple get thee away from me we wouldn't want that kind of things around us we would think something was seriously wrong so we need to listen to the creator and not provoke him now here we find more evidence his name is written because it says all those who call upon the name right all those who call upon Yahweh shall be saved written in stone we have Yahshua and we have what is in the stone on the you know there's different places all over and they're saying now that one of the oldest places we can find is in New Mexico so isn't it amazing that all the different continents all the different places when he scattered all the people his name was there and he also says what where my name is where I appoint my name where I put my name so when we're doing these things it's not in the temple here it's not in this place here it's not where Joe said let's congregate it's where he says I put my name and he's not going to put his name in the middle of the pagan sun worship and temple he's not going to share his glory with any other but all this comes down to again will we follow him and his word he went and he told them come and follow me did they know what they was getting into did they know everything that was going to happen probably not but they followed him and a lot of times that's what we have to lean on is his word says so it might take us years to figure out certain things but we shouldn't be so apt to just throw things away and throw it all out to say you know what I believe I was taught I was told and all these different things because sometimes what happens we've been deceived something was told to us wrong something even read in the scripture if we go back to 1611 if we go back if we take it all the way back we see a lot of things has happened there right so in closing we have to drop all the excuses and admit when we're wrong confess our sins and he will he is good and faithful he will forget them to admit when you're wrong to declare that you're wiser now than before and that is another part of getting away from sin not just declaring you're wrong but to admit you was wrong and declare it and then not do it again there's the wise because when you just keep walking back into the pig slop you're still in the pig slop right well, I wish I wouldn't have fell in the pig mud but we have to be careful because if we don't we're just always in the slop we have to go with Yahweh we have to go with his word we have to listen to him and again not provoke him not to get him angry because when we do we are going to definitely awake that lion and his wrath and we do not want any part of that so i hope this has helped you i hope it edifies i hope people don't lose their minds over everything that's going on and get upset and we are called to do a work and do a job and many times we fail that because we are so self-absorbed and almost every one of us do it we get on our own little preaching copy whatever we heard we and we have to do something about it but it should go where first right here if you learned it we had to fix me first and then right the boat's sinking we're in the middle of the water it's eight hours away what's the best thing for me to do throw your life jacket until you're gonna drown 
or put me a life jacket on, find the lifeboat, and then we can all be saved. Right? The best thing to do is apply the scripture to self and then let the others understand. Because if we don't, we're going to be drowning. We're going to be provoking him. And even in our own thoughts, right? Our imagination can be one of our biggest downfalls. Think not. Think not. There's a lot of doctrines out there that we're not even supposed to be thinking about. The law's done away with. This is done away with. Think not that I've come to abolish the law. A lot of these are a real quick discussion that should be ended years ago, but we still have the continual fight because of sin. So, till next time, may Yahweh bless you, may His kindness shine upon you, and may He grant you shalom. Shalom, everybody, and thank you very much for watching, for listening. If you have any questions or comments, let us know. Shalom.